Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilmember Irby? Here. Councilmember Page? Here. Councilmember Wassinger? Here. Councilmember Gray? Present. Councilmember Dolan? Here. Councilmember Trake? Present. Councilmember Harder? Here. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Uh, I move for approval of the journal of the meeting of April 25th, 2017. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The April 25th, 2017 journal is approved. I move this. Or Hazel, or. Go ahead. I, I, I move to suspend the rules and order for the presentation of a resolution honoring the longtime CEO of Spirit Signals Airport, Richard E. Dick. Papco and who passed away on April 14, 2017, and a presentation of a proclamation by my county executive to members of the St. Louis County Older Adult Commission in recognition of Older Americans Month. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The rules are suspended. Okay. What if we uh, present our resolutions? Um, yeah. Do you want read me? resolution number three? Yes. Okay, you want to make a motion? Sure. Resolution. You want to approve them, want to approve them now or you want to present them? What do you want to do? You usually adapt it before you present it. Okay. Did you want me to read resolution in its entirety, Mr. Chair? Uh, no, just read the resolve. Resolution number three, introduced by Council Members Irby, Page, Wassinger, Walton, Ray Dolan, Trakis, and Harder. I'll move to the end of the resolution. Be it resolved by the County Council of St. Louis County, Missouri, as follows Section 1. The County Council <coughs> extends its deepest condolences to all who knew, loved, and learned from Richard E. Dick Rabko, especially his wife Cynthia, daughter Tamara, sons Scott and Rich, five stepchildren, five grandchildren, seven step grandchildren, and one great grandchild, and joins them in honoring and celebrating a life very well lived. I move to adopt resolution number three. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trinket? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, resolution number three, there are seven ayes. Resolution number three is approved. Move for dash oh. resolution or reading of resolution number. Well, we don't. That's the only resolution we have to present. Oh, that's Mr. just the Chair. proclamation. And yeah. uh, John Bales, director, current director of Spirit Airport, is here to to um, accept that resolution, of honoring Mr. Ratko. Okay, that's great. So present it. Cool. <coughs> is that that one? Uh, yeah, they asked me to. Okay. We do that now. Or? Sure. Yeah. Do That's a proclamation for this? another group. This is for the resolution. This is for the old. No, the group. resolution is for, for Mr. Ramco. That goes to John Bales. It's going to be accepted by John. Yes. The proclamation is for another group. Sure. Yes. He, uh, Dick was the first employee ever hired to St. Louis Airport. Uh, came from the County Parks Airport in 1980. He took over first director of aviation. Um, he's probably the only county director that made it to Republican Democratic administration. So he's a good guy to learn from. He'd be proud of this. Um, he has a special saying about resolutions that I can tell you offline sometimes. Uh, basically, it's a bit about a dark suit and nobody notices or something, but you can't really see it. Uh, and we're having a celebration of life tomorrow. Uh, it's open to the public. Uh, it, you can just contact the airport if you're interested or new. 
Um, he was one of the founding fathers of the city of Chesterfield, which is unusual for a county executive to appoint someone to be a, a councilman. Uh, Two-time president of the chamber, uh, really involved in state aviation. Uh, was a great guy, and we appreciate this. So thank you very much on behalf of his family. Thank you. Thank you. This is a proclamation. The county executive wants to extend his apologies for not being here to do this personally. He, he looked forward to doing that, but unfortunately, he's out with the flood uh, situation um, all throughout St. Louis County, so he's he's uh, unnecessarily uh, can't make it. He, he'd rather be here, I'm sure. Uh, this is a proclamation from St. Louis County, whereas the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Administration for Community Living is leading our nation's celebration of Older Americans Month with the 2017 theme, Age Out Loud, to give a voice to today's older adults. Whereas St. Louis County has the largest number of old, older adults of any county in the state of Missouri, and our county's vision states that it is a welcoming, prosperous, and safe community where businesses thrive and people have an equal opportunity <coughs> to grow up and grow old successfully. And whereas St. Louis County is committed to supporting older adults as they take charge of their health, explore new opportunities and activities, and focus on independence. Whereas on the strength of its commitment to improve the quality of life for older adults, St. Louis County was accepted into the network of age-friendly communities by the World Health Organization and ARC. And whereas in June of 2015, the county adopted its three-year age-friendly plan with four key components to support a thriving and aging community by promoting health and well-being through healthy, active living, providing housing and neighborhood options to age in place, enhancing mobility options to, to support independence and involving older adults in social, civic, and ec economic pursuits. Whereas in December 2015, St. Louis County established by ordinance an older adult commission to provide advice on matters relevant to older adults throughout the county. <clears throat> Therefore, the county executive proclaims this May 23rd as Older Americans Month. So, um, anybody else want to join in presenting this? Sure. Anybody? Sure. All right. This is who's accepting this? We have our All right. Commission. Anybody uh, want to come down? Yeah. Come on down. Yeah. Uh, the Department of Services. Uh, staff Uh, we'll take one more item out of order. Um, we have uh, someone here from the police department who will update us on what's happening with the flood response in our community. Um, we appreciate all the work that you're doing to come up to the dais and uh, um, we appreciate you here tonight to give us an update and then we'll let you get back to your important duties. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you to the members of the County Council. Um, my name is Aaron Schaefer, Lieutenant on the St. Louis County Police Department. I work in the Chief's Office, and I'm just here to provide an update on our department's response to the flood and who we're working in cooperation with. So the National Guard, the Coast Guard, the Office of Emergency Management, Public Health, Transportation, Public Works, 
uh, the Salvation Army, the Red Cross are out there, Economic Council, and then utilities. So Missouri American Water, Ameren, and MSD are out there. Also fire, EMS, state, county, and local law enforcement are addressing all matters related to the flood right now. I'm happy to report that we have not, we have not been made aware of any injuries at this point. Uh, there's been a few rescues at the onset of the flood in Eureka and damage has been minimal and most of that damage has been uh, related to sewer backups. Uh, sandbag walls are doing what they're supposed to do, which is good. We've had great help from the community, uh, great outstanding help that's been very important. Uh, the important things to note is Eureka is supposed to crest tonight uh, or tomorrow at 1 a.m. and then Valley Park is expected to crest tomorrow at 7 a.m. Uh, the crest in Valley Park is expected to be the same as it was, uh, close to the same as it was in December of 2015. Uh, there have been a few minor breaches in the sandbag walls, but they've been addressed. It hasn't caused us any issues. Uh, the public should expect major road closures throughout the weekend, and uh, rainfall is expected Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, a mandatory evacuation of City of Valley Park is in effect, issued by the City of Valley Park Mayor and the St. Louis County Police are manning posts that cover the entrance and exit into Valley Park, and we're assisting residents if they need to go back and to get medicine uh, or vital things. But other than that, entrance is not allowed into Valley Park unless it's for uh, something vital. Uh, the main thing we're asking for the public's assistance and cooperation is just adhering to the posted signs. So if there's a sign that says the road is closed, we're just asking the public's assistance to abide by those signs and we're putting that out on social media. We've done several press releases and we're getting to the public that way. So please rip out no injuries and uh, minimal damage. Are there any questions I could assist with? Questions by any council members? Has the National Guard been helpful and I know they they were at Valley Park last night when I was down there. Yes, they have been very helpful. The National Guard and the Coast Guard have been very helpful in this endeavor. So and it's nice to have their help. On, yes. On yes, councilwoman. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Lieutenant Schaefer. Um, we have no bid opening, so we'll move the communications. Mr. Chair, there are no tax compromises, zoning matters, or road and bridge matters this evening, so we'll move to other communications under other communications, item number one. The seat file in the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. That will be the order. Item number two. The seat file and refer to the committee on disabilities, and that will be the order. Item number three, second district. The seat file and change of owner be approved as requested. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh -huh. Motion carries. Item number four, second district. The seat file and the change of owner be approved as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number five, six district. See file and temporary expansion of the premises be approved as requested, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, seventh district. Receive file and refer to the Department of Transportation and Public Works, to the Department of Planning, and to the County Counselor. So ordered. Item number seven, seventh district. Receipt file and the county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number eight, second district. Same motion, and that will be the order. Item number nine, first district. <coughs> Same motion. So ordered. Item number ten, second district. Receipt file and the appointments be approved as recommended. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number 11, 7th District. Receive, filed, and the County Council directed to prepare the appropriate, le re reg uh, appropriate legislation. So ordered. Okay. Item number 12, all districts. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Item number 13, 3rd District. Uh, it's, actually, it's actually the 7th District, so go ahead, Mark. 7th District, uh, receive, file, and the County Council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Sorry about that, Mr. Chair. Item number 14, 4th District. Receive, file, the county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 15. Receive and file, and that will be the order. Uh, please read the add ons. Item number 1, 6th District. Receive file, the county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. 
And if I may have a moment, Mr. Chair. Yes, if you want um, to thank you, number two. Yeah, I will. Same thing for number two, but before we move past number one, I just want to make sure the uh, folks here understand that um, the number one add-on tonight is um, to move forward with the McManus Construction Company um, petition for a zoning change. So uh, I've heard the folks that uh, came, and I've obviously um, had discussions with Mr. McManus, and we're going to let the council hear his petition and vote on it. And um, so for those of you that are here tonight in support of him, I just wanted you to know that going forward. And um, we'll let uh, this thing will proceed over the next few weeks and um, the council will ultimately vote on it. And then um, I'd have the same motion for uh, item number two on the add-ons. So ordered. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item number three, second district. We see following the county councilor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. Report from the county executive. Uh, report of special committees. There are none. Uh, public forum. Um, Councilwoman Wassinger, I know you have an event to get with your get to tonight with your son, which is very important. If you'd like to say something now, that be in order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have to attend an Eagle Scout dinner for my son. I apologize for having to leave early. But before, um, before I do leave around 6.30, I wanted to speak about the Magic House request. Um, I think probably some people are here tonight to speak on that matter. And I want to let you know that the Magic House has requested that I drop this request for now. There needs to be more discussion on the fact that this tax is on hotel motel stays in the county and is for the sole purpose of supporting recreation activities and tourism in the St. Louis area. That has yet to be brought into the discussion to date. To date, the county has collected approximately $225 million from this tax. Most of this tax money goes to pay for the Dome and the Cardinal Stadium, while the county has received a mere $7 million for attractions here in the county. This is a discussion worth having by the council, as I fully support allocating some of this money to attractions here in the county, especially a nationally recognized not-for-profit children's museum like the Magic House that provides so many benefits to, to children in each one of our districts. So I will be bringing it up at a later date. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Introduction, Bill. Uh, public public forum. Public 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 public. <laughs> we have 43 speakers this evening. My apologies. Uh, please state your name and uh, um, when, or please come to the podium when you've heard your name and uh, stay, help the county clerk spell it if it is uh, unique. And uh, please call the first uh, speaker. And Mr. Chair, since we have such a time, if it's okay, I'll, I'll uh, announce the speaker and also the person after them so that they can be prepared to come up. That's a great plan. Thanks. First speaker is Lynn LeBob, followed by John Scamell. Mr. Speaker, can we make sure the microphone is up? It is, Mr. Chair, it is um, turned up as high as it will go. The, if the speakers can you know, pull it down for. They're pretty their, short, um, so it'll be okay. Okay. And try to clearly. 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 Okay. Hi. Hi, my name is Lynn LaBob, and I'm from the Afton area. I've come here. Um, I'm a Christian patriot, and I go and I am a I go to a Baptist church myself, and seek the truth in all things. So let's trust in the Lord and lean now down our own understanding. I did have a question last week in regards to the McManus dilemma situation. Although I liked hearing the emotional, heartwarming stories and history of the business, I kept questioning and wanting to research, research further as to why. According to the St. Louis County personal property records, I wanted to know what prompted McManus to sell your building on February 1st, 2017, knowing the rezoning was not complete, especially after the first denial from the county, and then decide to purchase the property on Lee May Ferry on March 6th, 2017? This doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't the realtor and our buyer look for an M3 zoning property? I don't understand this. I, I don't buy it when it was stated that 
that that was the only property or location for M3 zoning. What is such a good deal that the McManus were heck bent on owning the property anyway, despite the problem with the zoning? And isn't this deceptive? What did McManus know from a county council member or executive to make a poor decision in purchasing the property? Also, in the past, we've had a problem with the lack of transparency and the planning and zoning of the St. Louis County government to deceive with zoning regulations. Isn't that why we have zoning re rules and regulations? It's the credibility of this process as, dis as District 6 resident and taxpayer that I and others are fed up. I don't know Ernie, the county councilman, but why is he the villain? Why was McManus heck bent on buying a piece of property knowing that it wasn't zoned properly? To me, that's, that's part of you knowing that. Ernie is doing the right thing, and I think you owe him an apology. I think he was actually trying to help you out. What you're doing is wrong and vilifying a man for doing what is right. As a business, it's your responsibility to make sure ahead of time that the zoning was suitable for your business and not to change the zoning regulations to suit your needs. Also, regarding the flooding on the not so great street sidewalk idea, here's a prime example of not having a road a road diet and making roads available to the vehicle tax paying public since our national disaster here, our state disaster. We don't want mass transit, which is a waste of taxpayers' money and dangerous to the health of our citizens. And I thank you all very much for your time. Thank you, Larry. Next speaker is John Scamell, followed by Dan Preston. My name is John Scamell, 4605 Lee May Ferry Road. That's the property right north of Tea Time or McManus property now. And uh, matter of fact, the driveway to the McManus property is on my property. They've got an easement for that. The, uh, you know, about four years ago, Tea Time came to me and wanted to know if I wanted to buy the property. That's how long it's been up for sale. And uh, I didn't care to buy it for many reasons, but the main reason it was so run down. And those kind of properties now are being overtaken by stuff like Dave and Busters and stuff. So uh, I think McManus is doing a really good thing. The property was going to sit vacant. The guy who owned it was walking out of it. I know all this because I talk to him all the time. And uh, so I think what McManus is doing is a good thing. He's cleaning the property up. He's fixing it up. You know, before there was the confetti, confetti all over the, the walls. So, uh, and I, I've been here three times. I don't know anything else to say. So, anyhow, I think it's a good thing. I think you ought to go ahead and let him keep his guys working and do the project and clean the neighborhood up. So, I thank you very much. Thank you, John. Next speaker is Dan Pressman, followed by Cameron Hartman. Hello, I'm Dan Pressman. I'm actually a customer of McManus, and I could be pretty short. They built a home for me. Um, they were honest. They kept the place clean, as I think they will keep their new facility clean. And I think they must be well funded because like, uh, unlike most construction companies, they weren't always begging me for money. So I think all of those things speak of them as a good corporate citizen and they will keep whatever agreements they have with the council. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Cameron Hartman followed by Bill Petty. Thank you, good evening everybody. 
Uh, my name is Cameron Hartman, and uh, I'm speaking tonight as the owner-operator of Hartman Tax Service, which is located at 03 Lee May Ferry Road. I've lived in South County for 24 years, and last year I actually left a 15-year corporate America tax consulting career to open up my own business. I've got six children who've gotten to see me build out a chunk of somebody else's business for all those years, and now I want them to see what building something with your own hands and with your own heart looks like. In the quest, I've built strong village of support and including mentors. Amongst the mentors is the McManus family. They've been a part of our lives for over a dozen years. We've watched the business grow, and most importantly, they've taught great ethics through volunteering their time, their wisdom, and their resources everywhere that they were needed. The 30-year business that they have has validated itself as a blue-chip professional company that puts back and that other communities would be very willing to try to take from ours. My business is located on the north end of the Lime Ferry Business Corridor, right in the heart of Lime. I drive past va vacant businesses every day on my four block drive to work. On a trip to my suppliers that are three miles further down, the, down Lime Ferry, I pass dozens of other vacant businesses. South County has a hollow commercial core. Every one of these empty businesses represents a missing potential client, a missing potential vendor, or other opportunities that have fled from South County. I want to add my thoughts on the tea time location to the record. It sits at the south end of the business corridor that Hartman Tax Service calls home. I believe that the McManus Construction Company has complied with every rule, every law, and every instruction that was set forth by the county in order to occupy the property that they acquired. And Councilman Trachis, I do encourage you to learn, learn those zoning laws and to take your fight directly to the Planning and Zoning Commission right the wrongs that you find. But until you make those legal changes, you have to follow the current laws and processes. Even the laws that you feel that are flawed are still the current law. That's how this whole entire misunderstanding occurred. McManus Construction, they have followed that law. Business owners and developers are visionaries. They're not always going to meet your ideals. They do have their own ideals, and it's what gives their businesses life and growth. We have a serious lack of both life and growth as evidence every time I drive past the vacant shell that could be somebody's dream and vision sitting in South County. Yet the entire situation is a circular logic nightmare that every property developer and business is going to avoid like the plague. Instead of development relying on predictable law, if waiting for an outside business to come in that matches the councilman's property ideals for what belongs in the, in the location, if that's our plan for developing District 6, then I assure you there won't be any more businesses left in District, District 6 for the councilman to match. Cameron, we have can to, you conclude? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. Yes. We have to allow development that complies with the law that's at hand to proceed. Sometimes, in order to fill those slots, it really is that simple. Thank you for your consideration and uh, forwarding the motion as well, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Next speaker is Bill Petty, to be followed by Karen Koff. Good evening. My name is Bill Petty, and uh, I'm currently retired, but my work history was uh, 25 years as Chevrolet service manager, and after that, another 19 years as uh, fixed operations manager for an RV dealership. I'm kind of familiar with the inner workings of a shop and the way they are, are conducted. And uh, I joined uh, Canaan, the C-A-N-A-A-N, Baptist Church, about 11 years ago, and I met Rob on a disaster relief call. Uh, he showed up with all of his equipment to help move down trees. Uh, Missouri Baptist disaster relief goes to people who have damage from storms, and uh, we clean up for them, one house and into the next. And uh, Rob selfishly brings his equipment to help do that, and he never charges anybody for it. He just donates that. Um, but through disaster relief, we got to meet Rob in, uh, then in the church, and, and uh, later on times, I uh, actually helped him during uh, uh, real busy times, like when the snow was snowing and we were open 24-7, it was, uh, they needed other people to help, and so I filled in. I got to know Rob on, on a deeper basis, and what I want you to know from that is Rob is a very empathetic man. He cares very much for his customers. He very, cares very much for his employees. 
and also his neighbors. He keeps a very neat and orderly lot. Um, I have cousins in the, in the uh, construction business. I never saw them keep their lot as neat and orderly as Rob does. Everything's got a place, everything's kept clean, and uh, uh, quite frankly, I believe he'd be a good neighbor. Um, I, I've heard that maybe this uh, property is in uh, Rob's business might not be a good fit, but I wonder what business might be with all the noise from the highway that's what, just 100, 200 feet away from that property? Um, sound walls don't kill all the noise, and when you have diesel trucks hitting the exhaust brakes and on the other side of the road, people accelerating, that's, that's noisy. Uh, if you've never slept next to a highway like that, you won't after you get an opportunity to move away. Um, I'd just like to thank you for letting me speak. Thank you, Bill. Next speaker is Karen Koff to be followed by Steve Heinrich. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Karen Koff. My husband and I have lived in South County for 31 years and are in District 6. We raised four children in South County and have moved here and moved here because of the people and their values. We've known Rob and Angela McManus about eight years and attend the same church. We're here tonight in support of their business seeking to locate in South County at the former Tea Time location. This property sat vacant for over a year before they purchased it. McManus Construction Company is a fine example of a small business to live around. Rob and Angela are honest, hardworking people who give back to the community with more than their taxes and the services they provide. They care about their employees they started another company called SnowPro, which repairs snow plowing equipment. They did this in order to keep their employees working year round. They repair competitors' snow plowing equipment. Imagine that, how many companies would do this in this day and age. They use their own equipment, as Bill Petty said, in the Canaan Baptist Chainsaw Disaster Relief Ministry, which reaches out to many communities besides our own. I could go on and on about the good works they do and have done with their business and outside their business. Would we, and likely most residents, care that this company uses a small section of Lee May Ferry to get to and from their property? No. Can we see this property from Lee May Ferry? No. Do we want this great small business owner to locate here in South County? Yes. As a voter and resident of District 6, my husband and I fully support McManus Construction Company moving to this location. Thank you for your time and attention. So. Thank you, Karen. Next speaker is Steve Heinrich, to be followed by Ed Hengel. Good evening. My name is Steve Heinrich. I live in St. Louis County, and I vote. My family's worked for the McManus family for over seven years. I'm my whole family. Uh, we've got about six of my family members that work for them. I consider them family. Rob McManus was raised on a farm where he got his great work ethic. Believe me, he likes to work. Sometimes we work 12, 16 hours. Sometimes we work 36 hours plowing snow. Um, he got his great work, work ethic. He worked those long hours and hard work to equal the American dream. He's one of the most honest people I know. He's my friend. He's a God-fearing man that doesn't know about the politics of big government and shouldn't have to. It would be a great misjustice to keep McManus Construction from employ employees from, its, from employing as many employees and providing for their families. The fact that his property sits next to the construction company next door to this property should kind of make this a no-brainer in my opinion. That, pro that construction company is huge. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Ed Hengel, followed by Deborah Goodway. Hello, my name is Ed Hengel, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to this forum. 
Um, I've run a family business for 30 years just around the corner from uh, Rob and Angela's uh, current location. <clears throat> the character of Rob McManus is not in question here. He's an outstanding person. We've known one, one another for approximately 20 years. As a businessman, he's thorough, he's diligent, he is courteous, and he pays attention to detail. He runs a family business which has expanded over the years, but he's remained close to his core values of honesty with integrity. He, in turn, serves our community while also employing our citizens. On a personal level, Rob has been a patient of mine for over these 20 years. We've often had the opportunity to speak on subjects other than his health concerns, and from these many conversations, I've come to realize his dedication to his family, to his spirituality, to his community, and to his work. When it comes to the good neighbor policy, as someone else just touched on, Rob is head and shoulders above the gold standard. <clears throat> and the outward appearance of his construction business is both clean and organized. This is not an eyesore as some people may worry. <clears throat> He's also a compassionate man. When I was faced with my own health care challenges, he showed just what kind of spirit and love he was, what he was contained inside of him. On more than one occasion, he's done service work at no charge. He's a man who is always willing to help, even when he may be losing income. Rob McManus is a professional, he's a friend, and he's an asset to our community, and we should all strive to this level of quality in ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ed. Next speaker is Deborah Goodwin, to be followed by Brian Green. <laughs> My name is Deborah Goodwin. I live at 712 Rain Ridge Drive and I'm in the 6th District. I work for Mr. McManus in the Snow Pro Park Sales and Service. Last week after we were left here and then Mr. McManus had been uh, interviewed by KMOV, we had many people call us on Friday morning at work wanting to know what they could do to help us. And uh, there was a lady in the Oakville community and she on her Facebook page started a poll late Friday afternoon which reads, should McManus Construction and Snow Pro Parts be allowed to move to the property that already they already own at 4631 Lee May Ferry Road, formerly Tea Time Family Fund Center? They have been approved by the Planning and Zoning District. Yes. Neighbors and surrounding businesses are in favor of this business being allowed to complete their move. Are you in favor of this business being allowed to complete their move onto this property that they already own? And this is the result. We have 256 yeses. We have two who cares and one with no opinion and no zero, zero for no votes. And I want to thank you. I talked a long time last week and I do love my job and I hope to keep it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Brian Green or possibly Greer, I'm not sure. Green. Yeah, followed by Bill Kostecki. Hello, my name is Brian Green. Uh, 20 years ago, I interviewed with, job for a jo with Rob for a job, and my concern was I had just recently got a divorce. I spent a lot of time with my son, and I told Rob that, you know, when, when that time comes, that I would be with my son. He said, don't worry, we're all family men here and I've been a part of Rob's family for 20 years. Uh, the, the property on, I guess the, the, with the problem with the property, I, it said idle for years. It was uh, non-productive, and I would think a thriving business like McManus Construction Company and Snow Pro could contribute a lot to the economy of Oakville. Um, you know, we're purchasing supplies and local supply goes to the schools, the ambulance, fire department, and as well as the property taxes on the property. Um, you know, McManus Construction has contributed to the economy for the last 30 years. And, and, and you know, it's understandable that, that you would want you know, a, a family-oriented business there, but, you know, the times now, it don't seem like that's feasible anymore. 
And I think that, um, you know, being a stone's throw from another construction company, why couldn't you have two on the same street? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Brian. Next speaker is Bill Kostecki, followed by Catherine Whitkin. Uh, good evening, Councilman, members of the Council. I appreciate you listening to me tonight. Uh, what I'm here for is a character reference, as you heard already. Uh, many people speak about them, uh, Rob and Angela, they're great people. Um, what I am is I'm a neighbor of theirs, and I'm not a neighbor next door, and uh, I'm a neighbor down the street. Well, I've known them for about 10 years, and I didn't uh, you know, know them personally on the level that I do now for about the first three or four years that they lived there. You know, I knew them as a way by, uh, how you doing neighbor kind of thing. And uh, what they've done to the neighborhood is amazing, and I'm sure they'll do the same thing to where they're uh, trying to move to. <laughs> if you give them the opportunity. Uh, you know, they've uh, added onto their house, and when they added onto their house, it was a, uh, you know, they gave us a little letter to the neighborhood saying, hey, we're gonna have some construction going on, you know, be aware of it, you know, uh, you know, try to, uh, we we'll try to accommodate you, and uh, but just be aware that we're going to do some additions. Well, you know, when you do an addition to a house, sometimes you think about it. We live in a modest neighborhood. You know, it's a brick neighborhood, uh, all brick houses and things like that. So you think maybe they're just going to do a uh, kind of stick-built addition. No, they went full-blown. What they did is they uh, took into consideration uh, the neighborhood and the design of their house. What they did is, uh, you know, they didn't raise the house. They brought it out forward, and they took the neighborhood into consideration, made their house a uh, very unique design, very nice, but it blended in well. It is isn't something that you know stands out like an eyesore, and uh, that's just the kind of people they are. And then they uh, took the neighborhood themselves upon themselves. They took the neighborhood and uh, brought us all together. Um, to a block party, and I only knew maybe four, five, six neighbors, and I've lived in that neighborhood for 25 years. Well, now I know 30, 40, 50 of them, and I know them on a personal level, not every day, but I do know them a lot better, and it's all because of them, and that's what they do, you know, they're uh, community type people, you know, they think about other people, and what they want to do is, uh, you know, be part of it, and that's what they're trying to do now, you know, they're trying to move on to bigger and better things, be part of the community up there, and bring to them what they brought to us, and uh, I appreciate your time. I hope you get in the uh, move. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Catherine Whitkin, to be followed by Dennis Cazella. Thank you. I'm Catherine Whitkin. I'm a surgeon at St. Louis University Hospital. I have been a South County resident for my entire life, other than the period that I was gone at school. At the time I became aware of Rob McManus and his work, I didn't have very much money. I was the person who was remodeling a house on the discounts from Home Depot and at Lowe's, and if you bought in bulk from both things, you could get 10% from each accounting. Rob worked with me on this. As you might imagine, my hours are long. They're almost as long as Rob's. And because of that, it's necessary for him to do the work when I'm not present. His is the only company I've ever given the key to my home and not had a single concern. I've listened here this evening, as I know you all have. I've heard a lot about his testimony as a good neighbor, as a good businessman, his commitment to the community, how he maintains his shop, how he works with his employees, and who you want to have as a neighbor in your neighborhood. I think he's the kind of person that South County needs to encourage to grow a business in our community because he's demonstrated he's done it all along. He's here for, to be here for the long haul. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Dennis Gazella to be followed by Ron Levesque. <clears throat> My name is Dennis Gazella. I'd just like to say a few things on behalf of McManus Construction. <clears throat> I've lived in the same general South County area as McManus Construction for the past 18 years. My wife and I have elderly parents. A little over a year ago, we made a decision to move my parents into our home. In order to accommodate this change, we needed to add a room onto our house. I interviewed three contractors from the room addition, one being McManus Construction. In the end, we chose McManus Construction because their bid was by far the most professional and provided the most detail. We felt like we knew what we were getting for our money, and we were happy to be working with a contractor that was in our backyard. Rob and his crew started construction as soon as the plans were approved and permits granted. I hadn't done a major renovation before, so I didn't know what to expect, and I'd heard horror stories about working with a contractor. But I can tell you that Rob and his crew were considerate of my family and acted very professionally. Any questions I had or issues that came up with were dealt quickly and thoroughly by Rob and his team. 
The result was that our addition was completed on time and within our negotiated budget. We've been very pleased with the work McManus Construction did for us and my parents love their new home. I was excited to have been able to find a local small business that did a great job and was easy to work with. I think the county needs more honest, hardworking, and responsible small businesses like McManus Construction. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Ron Levesque to be followed by Mike Allick. Good evening. Um, just on behalf of the McManus, I've uh, owned Show Me Lanes. It's the uh, bowling center just north of the property. And um, we've been here 39 years. And in those 39 years, uh, I've got to know most all of the business owners up and down the, uh, the corridor there, whether it be the big business, the big box store, Sam's, or the small guy. And as a business owner, um, we need McManus as a, as a neighbor. So we would like to uh, get him voted in if it's, if it's possible, which I'm sure it is. But uh, speaking for the businesses, we would like to have him for a neighbor. Thank you. Next speaker is Mike Allick, followed by Tracy Clark. Good evening. My name is Mike Allick. I'm a software engineer and web developer. I'm here with my wife and four-year-old twin daughters. I have worked for Rob McManus as a consultant on both of his businesses for approximately four years now. When Rob first called me and asked me to help him, I did the same checkup on him that I do with everyone else. I asked a business owner client of mine who referred Rob to tell me about him. Right away they said Rob always pays his bills. You won't have any problem with him. He's willing to listen to your ideas. <clears throat> In four years of working with Rob, I can totally agree with that. Rob McManus walks his talk. One of his first projects we tackled when I started working with Rob was a makeover of his business websites. Rob, Angela, and I were looking at a collection of photos trying to pick what pictures to include in the new uh, construction company site. I came across some pictures of Rob and Angela in Joplin, Missouri after it was devastated by a tornado in 2011. The small Missouri town suffered over $1 billion of damage and painful loss of life. <clears throat> Normally when weather causes major damage, it brings all kinds of scam artists out of the woodwork trying to make a fast buck. The pictures I had noticed were pictures of Rob, his wife Angela, and their church group. After Joplin was hit, Rob loaded up a truck and a trailer with tools and supplies. Rob and his wife went to Joplin to help people in their darkest hour. Everything the McManus family did for tornado victims was free of charge. Through four years and dozens of different projects for Rob's businesses, I've interacted with the family and employees closely enough to make several more observations. Even when Rob's business might be in a slow period, he makes every effort to keep his employees on the payroll. He has had his employees work on various projects like painting the office, remodeling the company building, or repaving the business parking lot. This is quite a different story than what we hear other companies doing. Instead of laying people off and protecting only his money, he creates work to help his employees and the business. As part of my development work for his website, I captured time-lapse video of a major new home build. I also interviewed Rob's client. Everything the homeowner said about Rob's attention to detail was evident in roughly 100,000 images captured through the whole build process. Rob's client was truly grateful for what had been done for them. They told me about Rob's patient way of explaining things and how calmly he dealt with their many design choices. He, his client, had invited me to lunch at their new home to share all of this just because they felt gratitude and wanted to give back. I repeatedly see Robert McManus using a principle of highest good wins. That's three minutes, Mr. Chair. Okay. He may not even have words to describe his own style since he is more walk than talk, but the principle says when faced with a decision that affects others, choose the path of highest good for all concerned. Rob's employees, subcontractors, neighbors, and church friends would all agree that's how he operates. The only real highest good choice for District 6 is to allow both McManus businesses to serve the community as planned. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mike. 
Next speaker is Tracy Clark to be followed by Joe Clark. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak in this week. Uh, my name is Tracy Clark. I live at 4733 Sand Hope in District 6. Um, and I'd like to thank you for um, hearing all of us that are here tonight. I know it's a bunch. Um, I want to encourage the board to approve the zoning of the old tea time for the McManus family so they can resume their longstanding business in the St. Louis County area. I've lived in St. Louis County my entire adult life. I'm a mother of five children and wife to one of the county's finest. My husband's a police officer for 27 years for St. Louis County. We live in District 6, like I said, and we drive by the Lee May Ferry property on an almost daily basis. The previous business was run down. It often had fights. I was not comfortable bringing my children there. Fortunately, they couldn't see it from the road, so that was a good thing. As I would drive down Mattis Road, we would see the location of tea time with lights and noise all the time. The property has been for sale for nearly a year when the McManus has purchased it. They seek to put a 30-year business in that lot, which they already own. They're already cleaning up that property. I also would say that their previous property in the Afton area is right down the street, walking distance to my dad's home of many years, and next to Bayless Baptist Church, which we knew the former pastors there. They don't have a problem with it. And I can tell you, I was down that road today taking my dad to surgery. He, we talked about it. My dad would tell me if there was any problem because he will tell you anything. He's never had a problem with the way the site looked. He's never had a problem with construction equipment going in and out. He's never said there was a problem with roads getting damaged from their equipment. It's not a problem and they, this would be a good asset for St. Louis County and the South County area. The service company that McManus is want to bring to the location are likely the only type that would succeed in that area because of that large hill entrance and it butts right up to the highway like someone else mentioned. It's a noisy area. The previous site wasn't a problem. I don't see it being a problem here. And I want to thank you, Mr. Trakas, um, Councilman Trakas, for bringing that motion forward to vote. I ask that you would approve this change quickly, because like they said, they have very short time to get moved out of that previous property. They're already cleaning up and packing up the old property, and they're ready to move forward with their business and their life. So thank you. The next speaker is Joe Clark, to be followed by Daniel Carr. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Joe Clark. I live at uh, 4733 Stanhope. Um, and I want to thank you, Ms. Trakas, for moving this issue forward. Um, and I'd urge the county council to vote on that expeditiously as, as uh, you know, there's limited time before um, the operations of the company have to stop. But um, I'm also honored to have a chance to uh, to voice my concerns and, and also grateful that uh, as a governing body you allow the citizens of, of uh, that have concerns for issues to come and, and uh, voice their concerns in front of you. I appreciate that. Um, uh, I'm here as a citizen of the 6th District to show my support for the McManus Company for Rob and Angela McManus. Um, also to, to uh, let you know that McManus is our good, hardworking Christian business owners uh, who employ several people in the area and that are excited to um, conduct business in South County. And, and um, I'm just going to end soon. And uh, I know there's a lot of speakers and everything, but I just want to urge you to uh, take the matter um, beforehand and, and uh, vote expeditiously on it. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Daniel Carr to be followed by Greg Greplin. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Daniel Carr, and I appreciate you all hearing us and taking this valuable time because we know you all are busy. Um, I'm the senior pastor at Canaan Baptist Church, where the McManuses attend and are faithful members. And uh, we've heard a lot already about their character. And I just want to just kind of add briefly um, to uh, the sentiments already conveyed. So I want to encourage you to uh, to go ahead and approve this based on emotional reasons. It's already been stated, uh, just the character of the McManus family, but also some pragmatic reasons as well. Uh, uh, so first of all, you've heard a lot about their character, and times like this, you know, we tend to over-embellish a lot of people's character to try to, to get you to do what we think we want you to do. 
But I can say in this case that there's not embellishment going on. Um, I've known them for five years. I've been a South County resident for five years in District 6, raising seven children in this great county. We absolutely love it here. One thing we love about South County is just uh, there's, there's so many family businesses. And uh, it's just kind of a bedrock of uh, American culture to have family businesses and people you know and have a relationship with to do business with. And I think Manus family is one such family. And their character has been attested to. They are very generous. They're very community-minded. Uh, they've lived here a long time, so they are just part of the fabric of South County. Um, so the characters attested for, uh, but also just for pragmatic reasons. Again, many already stated the precedent. There is already a construction company on Lee May Ferry. Uh, there is the original zoning of M1 from 1965 uh, that they're simply asking to go back to. So it's not a, a, a new idea. It, is, it has precedent. And also just the proximity to their clients. You know, Snow Pro services a lot of South County clients, including South County Mall. So anytime it snows or ice, it's Snow Pro is there cleaning all the ice off of South County Mall. So it's very close just right down the street, as well as many of uh, the clientele that they so faithfully uh, and diligently serve. And so I think this is a very good investment in South County to have the McManuses move to the Lee May Ferry location. And again, I just want to say thank you for hearing this, considering all this, and just encourage you to uh, approve uh, this relocation for them. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker is Greg Gremplin, followed by Richard Duker. Hi, my name is Greg Rempler. I've been a lifelong uh, resident of St. Louis County. I currently live in the 6th District. Uh, the last time I got involved in anything like this was over uh, by St. Anthony's Hospital when they had the large uh, apartment complex they wanted to put in next to South County Baptist Church. I appreciate you listening to us and stopping that development. I'm here today, though, because I am in favor of McManus Construction being allowed to move to that location. I remember the years ago where Phoenix Construction is now, that used to be Reese Moran Lumber Company, and it really wasn't a very attractive looking business. And I, I can say, honestly, I travel that road almost every day. Since Phoenix Construction has gone in there, I think they've done a great job. I think the area has improved. My children, they were younger, used to go to tea time, and I can tell you that property has been in decline. I can think of no other business that would be there. The railroad tracks are right there. When they come by, the ground actually shakes. It's so close. There's a major highway behind there. The property owner next to them is in favor. I see no reason why they can't do that. I drive down Lima Ferry Road, I go in towards Lima Area, I see the building after building that are vacant. I see our economic development engine there that is deteriorating, and I don't want to see it get down in our location and do that. So I please urge you all to please allow this gentleman that has his small business to be able to bring that to South County and make that a nice looking property instead of an eyesore that's run down. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Next speaker is Richard Duker, followed by Brian Koff. My name is Richard Duker. I live at 322 Union Road, almost right behind where the McManus building is right now. It was formerly owned by uh, the uh, phone company, which I don't know if any of you saw that building prior to. I've lived there since 93. That It was a dump. I mean a dump. It looked like Northside City buildings that are falling apart. He has done so much work to beautify that area. Even in the heavy snows at night, you don't hear that business going with moving load and salt, running trucks in to repair all night long. My dogs don't bark at all. And he's been an asset to the neighborhood. He's been a good fit to the neighborhood. He's going to be a good fit to where he's going, to the place out there. Only time I ever seen that place is if you're lucky, you can glance and catch a piece of it when you're going down the highway. But there's no business that I know that would want to put something up there because it's out of the way. You can't see it unless you build it 34 floors up. But you need to get going through that as soon as possible and try to get this uh, going for him. It's the tax dollars that you're wasting. The longer it takes, the tax dollars could be generated for the school districts and everything out there and the people that are, could be losing their jobs. I can't afford to keep my son financed and his kids if he loses his job. I just lost my wife in February. So it's hard on one income. So how would he do it with only one income and three kids in the Melville District? Well, thank you all, and I hope you can get this thing done. Thank you. Next speaker is Brian Koff, followed by Roger McCroy.
members of the council, audience, good evening. My name is Brian Koff. I'm a resident of the 6th District of St. Louis County. I grew up in Oakville. Um, 12 years ago, I enlisted in the Army to fight in the war and serve my country. And I've been all over the country training. I've been across overseas training. And I deployed out of Jefferson Barracks with the 10th Side Battalion and fought in the surge in Iraq. Well, when I'm saying this is I've been all around the world, but Oakville's my home. I'm a St. Louis guy. So that's me. And the reason that I'm here is I wanted to bring your attention to uh, Mr. Rob McManus of McManus Construction. Rob's my friend. I got to know him at Canaan Baptist Church in Oakville because we're both members of the Canaan Baptist Church Disaster Relief Team. Now, we've uh, deployed as a team like to North City, Sunset Hills, Joplin, Hannibal and all these places and we go clean up lots where trees have fallen down on people's houses and in their driveways and we do it for free. Well, Rob voluntarily brings his equipment with our team. He's got a specialized grabbing machine, a mechanical device that grabs big limbs and drags them off. And that makes our team the most capable team in the disaster zone. And he does that all on his own. And we're, we're the best team out there when we have that kind of capability. And that's what Rob does. That's the kind of guy he is. You know, he's a great guy. And um, that brings us to the, the point why we're here, which is the approval of this zoning issue. And I think that, um, I, I, I thank Mr. Trakis for moving this forward. And I would hope everyone would vote in his favor because he just, uh, he's a good friend and a good guy. And um, I, I think, as you've heard everyone speak, you know, they can speak to that, but I've, I've got to work with them in the disaster zone, and he's certainly a good friend. And, and I thank you all. Thank you. Next speaker is Roger McRoy, followed by Chris Goodwin. My name is Roger McRoy. I live at 3616 Summit Avenue. We're right across the street uh, from the McManus's uh, soon to be, hopefully, construction company. Um, we have, uh, I didn't know Rob beforehand or his wife Angela, but uh, Rob came up, introduced himself, and just after the neighbors talking to him, they volunteered to get signatures for him. I mean, this is something saying for a man. And Mr. Trakis, I voted for you, number one. Um, I, I would just like to uh, see the McManuses be able to have their construction company. Um, they were talking about uh, heavy trucks, 10-ton uh, trucks. Now, just in our small subdivision of 70 people, uh, 70 homes, I should say, um, there's up to four trash trucks one time a week. We're supposed to have two. We stopped and asked him how come they had so many trash trucks. He said, because we're helping the guys out. That's four trash trucks with unlimited weight capacity. Whenever they're full, they empty. Um, as far as Lime Ferry goes, isn't Lime Ferry a heavy load zone? Um, they normally don't use the highway with the quarries that we have around us. Um, they use Lemmy Ferry, Telegraph, Baumgartner um, as far as uh, the hauling. Uh, they, you very seldom ever see them on the highway. Um, on Baumgartner Road, there's also a chemical company there that's right next to the river. Um, they have their zoning. They have their chemical company, um, which a lot of their employees wear masks uh, to protect herself. And we do have the flooding now. Um, if it goes over Baumgartner Road, it's going to get their company. Um, and I just, uh, I appreciate you going to take the time to put it before the board in order to uh, pass this. And I hope, Mr. Trakas, or should I say Councilman Trakas, I did vote for you, and many people here voted for you. Um, and we would like to see the McManus, comp uh, McManus Construction Company go into play. Um, if you would like to come up to my home and 
Well, I, I would say come up to my home and listen what tea time was, because I'll tell you right now, tea time was terrible. Not only just fights, the noise was horrendous all the way till 12 o'clock at night. You couldn't go to bed, and not on my street. Uh, the noise was entirely too heavy. I won't take up any more of your time, but please, if you could consider this and the rest of the council, consider this company. They'll be a good fit to our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Chris Goodwin to be followed by Gary Rose. Ladies and gentlemen of the committee, Pastor Chris Goodwin, and I've lived in Alime since 1964. I raised my family in South St. Louis. I also owned at one time several businesses in St. Louis County. Uh, I also owned a five family apartment building. The reason I bring all that up is I know how hard it is to be on the business end of a business. But I also have known the McManuses for close to 20 years. And on top of that, I also was their pastor for eight years as an associate at Bayless Baptist Church. You've already heard from several people as to their character. But I just want to encourage, as a St. Louis County resident, I just want to encourage this council to proceed with the recommendation of the McManuses being able to take over the tea time location to move their business. And I would just ask the council, if the shoe was on the other foot, wouldn't you like to see that happen? Thank you. Next speaker is Gary Rose, to be followed by Mike Sita. Gary Rose, and I know the McManus is uh, about 20 years. Within a two and a half mile stretch from Lime, Deerberg's Plaza, to the old tea time location in, in Lime Ferry, there are in excess of 50 commercial property vacancies, including five empty shops in Lime Deerberg's Plaza, two empty shops in MacArthur's Strip Mall, three additional empty shops in the Rumas Plaza. Wendy's, the old Wendy's, uh, is vacant. Dairy Queen is vacant. There are seven vacancies in the Kmart Plaza, 14 empty stores in the mall, two open stores behind Lindbergh Tire Auto. Sports Authority is empty. The shops on either side of the bridge in Charlie's is empty. There are eight vacancies in the old Navy Shopping Center is empty. And just below Sam's, there are two vacancies in the Millville Strip Mall. There are 5,000 unused square feet of space in the Lindbergh Building and an additional 3,600 square feet for lease in the Lindbergh Auto Tire Complex. There are also a number of undeveloped lots where buildings used to stand and moving a mile the other way from Lime Plaza to the River Pair. There are many additional empty plots of land and vacant buildings and offices. Many most of vacant properties that I have mentioned have been that way for between two to five years, according to Collier's International Commercial and Industrial Vacancies is under 7% across the county. St. Louis County is in a boom market for commercial and industrial property. However, with the exceptions of Earth City and the airport, where new buildings skew the vacancy rates, South County has the highest level of vacancy in the county by a wide margin. The South County area is, is stagnant in, to, in growth and even losing ground. This says something about what is happening here. Our properties are simply not wanted and have not been for a, Larry, a very long time as evidenced by, by how far behind, behind we have fallen to the rest of our, our county. My question for the council is, what are you doing to bring businesses to South County? And equally importantly, what are you doing to retain the businesses in South County instead of driving them out? McManus's construction belongs to South County where they have been for a large number of years. They have done every single thing that the county has asked them to do to stay here, and we need them because if they don't stay, there's a good chance that no one will replace them, as evident by our vacancy rate. I'm challenging the county council tonight to take a straight up or down vote on McManus's construction. Will they be filling a vacant South County property suitable for their needs for former tea time complex, or are you suggesting that we add an another more vacancy and lose one more businesses? Our councilman, he has said, wants to change these patterns of vacancies. Well, let's make that positive change for South County tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker is Mike Sita. And Mr. Chair, I'm not sure the next name. I think it's David Horan. Hello. 
My name is Mike Sita, uh, District 6 resident. Um, I, unlike most people here, I don't know Rob. Um, I saw his story on the news and uh, I reached out to him via Facebook uh, in our local, local community group, in the Oakville community. Um, and he seems like a great guy. He seems like he's doing everything. Like, I mean, look at all these people showed up for him. I mean, that's crazy. But um, I'm just a resident. I said, I don't have a dog in fight. I, I just see it as an addition to our community. Because as Gary just said, um, there's 50 vacant. I mean, there's so many vacant properties there. I was at tea time just before it closed with a birthday party. The parents had scheduled the party prior to seeing it as kind of a last minute thing. And we all showed up. And it was in such disrepair and such, it was disgusting. We, the party was canceled and they were scheduled in. And now no one's going to move into that business in that condition. And I mean, it's a failing business. Why would we put another business of that same type in that business? It doesn't, it's a poor business model. It does not make sense. Um, but Rob has a construction company. He can make those repairs to the building. He can repair that you know, to his, to his needs. And it won't just be another empty building. I, am, I, I love Oakville. I love our community. Um, I just see it as a good thing. And I hope you guys uh, vote, vote for it. And um, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Next speaker is David Horan. Is, is that correct, sir? Yes, yeah. I'd be followed by Mike Hawkins. Hi, I'm David Horan. I'm a uh, lawyer here in Clayton, and I'm a customer of Rob. And I think that what you've heard here tonight is that uh, Rob is a wonderful person. His company is, uh, is excellent. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, I've had personal experience with him. I've had three different projects um, performed by Rob. And certainly I'd be up here telling you if that weren't the case. But in St. Louis County, what we want to do is keep the businesses that we have here. And that's the reason for a zoning variance. And if he's bought land and is willing to put it in, and you don't have to do something like a tax increment financing to have a company move in, um, I think it's excellent. And I think it's excellent that he wants to invest in the area. He wants to employ people. And obviously, what you've heard here tonight is that this is an excellent company and an excellent family. And I support a zoning variance. Thanks. Next speaker is Mike Hawkins, followed by Andrew Bell. Mr. Chairman, members of the council, I've known Rob McManus and his family for 18 years. I taught their sons, one of whom served in the United States Marine Corps. And uh, I actively work with Rob. He, I work at Baylor School District. And Rob um, is around our campus a lot. He does a lot of work for us. And uh, when he told us he was moving, I was concerned about that, quite frankly, because for selfish reasons is Rob donates a lot to the school. He's up, he does a lot of little projects for us and gives us special attention. Um, I was amazed to hear tonight the testimony of people saying how much he gives. I thought he was just doing us a favor. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out maybe not so much. But I was, I was prompted, well, he does a lot for us. Uh, I was prompted to come up here because I was trying to figure out what America we live in where we don't encourage our businesses to expand. And I was heartened, Mr. Trakis, by your introduction of the legislation because everything should have a fair hearing. And I think that you know, mission accomplished on that. And so it's in the hands of the council. You've heard so much about uh, Mr. McManus, his family, his company. And uh, so I ask you to consider that. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Andrew Bell, followed by Bill Nittig. Thank you, Council. Uh, my name is Andrew Bell. I have uh, known Rob for 33 years. Uh, I personally have owned a uh, contracting business myself for eight years. Uh, Rob has loan tools and advice 
uh, for all those years. Uh, I know it's extremely difficult to acquire a property to run a business in out of, personally. Uh, this property is perfect for the contracting business, uh, surrounded by another contracting company, train tracks, cell phone tower, Highway 55, and Lima Ferry. Um, this contractor has built and remodeled numerous homes in this area, and this company has done a tremendous amount of snow removal also in this area, including South County area. Thank you for your time. Next speaker is Bill Nittig, followed by Roger Meter. Good evening, my name is Bill Knittig. My family has been South County, Melville area residents since the 1800s. From 1940, and that's the truth. If you go back and look for the Knittig name or you look for the Cressinger name, from 1940 to 1980, my grandfather owned Knittig Brothers Bowl. He was one of the first board of directors members for Lime Bank. I watched Lime Ferry grow from a two-lane road, I walked that road from Melville High School to my home on Butler Hill many times because I missed a school bus. <laughs> but what I, I'm here tonight to talk about Rob McManus, and the, the fact is, I know Rob in three, threefold methods. One, I know him as a personal friend. I know him as a co-worker in the disaster relief area, but I also know him because I've used his business. And Rob, what Rob has done for all homeowners they wished they had a contractor who would do the same. When I had storm damage done and my insurance company was telling me, this is all we can do, Rob is the one who went and met with the insurance company on my behalf and said, here's what the issues are. He resolved it. He, he was able to make sure that my home was repaired correctly. And he worked with the insurance company. That, to me, gives great testimony. And testimony tonight is what you've heard from multiple people about character, about the way he's handled his business. But Rob can produce sustainability in the businesses in South County. His business has been around for a large number of years, as you heard. He has children, sons, grown sons, who are being groomed and have gone into the same business. This is what you want. You want sustainability. You want accountability. You want honesty. You will get that with Rob McManus. The question tonight, as you look, as you sit and listen to testimony, is not about why should we. The question here to ask yourself is why shouldn't we? Thank you very much. Next speaker is Roger Meter, followed by Rob McManus. Thank you. My name is Roger Metter. I live in the Oakville area. At the last meeting, I uh, spoke about the difficulty we had in finding Rob a space to move his business to his growing business. It had to be the right balance of outside space and inside space, and this seems to meet that with a lot of work that we're going to do. But tonight, I just want to speak as a, a resident of Oakville since 1976. We've seen businesses come and go, but it's so important I think that if we can pull and keep a successful business in our area, I just can't imagine anything better than that. Thank you for your time. Next speaker is Rob McManus, followed by Angela McManus. Good evening, Councilman. can't say what I was prepared to say today. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed by the support here tonight. <laughs> uh, people that have spoke on my behalf have come out of the woodwork, not solicited. They've heard about us from another company or another person, a friend, family member. They've heard that our rezoning has was 
received on March 28th and has not been acted on. Councilman Trakis, thank you for adding it to the agenda tonight. Fellow councilmen and women, I hope that you will take this into consideration to vote for and approve our relocation. Thank you. Angela Romanis followed by Gary Bond. Good evening. I'm not going to be as enter entertaining as last week. Um, but I'll tell you, I am so happy to have the family that I have. A few of my sons were able to come tonight, and those are the ones that learned how to earn. They have wives. They have families that I'm so proud of. You just don't know. Very humbling. Back to me. Um, Rob, I'm going to try to sweep up for you. <laughs> because you deserve it. Um, I, too, was at the high school. I never see him, but I substitute teach at the high school, and Mr. Hawkins was great to come by and talk for you. Um, as, like I told you last week, every time I go up there, those kids ask me what it's like to own a business. I reminded them again that they have to work hard in life. I love seeing them every time I'm up there. I love being called their favorite sub. But the most part, I think they listen just a little bit to what it takes and how dedicated you have to be. Um, I've distributed some pictures. We're going to run out of time. Um, I was going to go through them. It's quite simple that it's a lovely piece of property to me. Maybe not for somebody else. Um, go counterclockwise clockwise through your pictures. You go up your driveway here um, and you go off to the right. I want you to see this while you're deciding there's nothing to hide. And I thought thousands of words or in those pictures, there's a saying about that. So you go to the right, you go up, that'll be the construction on the north side of the building. It's a lovely, kind of ugly metal building. You go around, you see the cell tower, and I can just see my guys pulling in in the morning and going off to your homes to do their job. Because if they're there, we're not making money. Okay, and then we go up the uh, highway. You can kind of see it there. This is what a parts room looks like for SnowPro, because that's really why we're developing and needing a, a larger space. Online store a little bit, some waiting room for the customers. These are where we were, so I can't tell you, can't take a picture of what's yet. Offices, so that Debbie gets her office. We talked about last week. We have a shop picture. I don't want you to be in the dark. Lift gates, I didn't know what a lift gate was. And Rob said we need to do that because we have people that we want when we need them in the winter doing snow plows, and I'm going to figure out what to do. And he did. They're really shiny when they start off. Some lift gates. So there's that. Um, that's for your your information. Anything you need to know from us as you're making your decision, I've left you a pamphlet of who we were as McManus Construction, and this is a little bit more on what Snow Pro is. Nothing to hide. We appreciate your time serving for us. And the last thing that I want to do that I think you need to go ahead and do, Rob, is we wanted to make sure that you saw the people. If there's anything more humbling to go to a meeting and know if you didn't make it, that it was going to be taken care of. And I want to tell you, I want my um, family to stand up. Rob, you should have done this. This is your job. My family to stand up. If you're our friends to stand up. If you're employees to stand up. We're running out of time. These people need to go. But this is what Rob wanted to thank you with was to tell you that this was unexpected, and I so appreciate, so appreciate every one of you. Thank you. Final speaker this evening is Gary Bond. Hello. 
Uh, my name is Gary Bond. I'm a 40 year resident of St. Louis County. Uh, I've been involved with uh, real estate and business for uh, since the early 90s. And I can tell you it's challenging sometimes to, uh, to work through everything. But also, um, I'm uh, one of the pastors at Canaan Baptist Church. I got called into ministry later in life. And uh, it's great to see uh, people like Rob jump in and, and give a hand. Um, and I've seen him donate his time and his equipment, his money, to uh, various events that we have around the church. And I think tonight what we've heard is that we see a man who's, a, who's been a good neighbor. He's been willing to jump in and help in very in charitable uh, situations, uh, uh, disasters, and I think you can see from all the people who have shown up uh, the kind of support that he and his family have in our community. And so, I, I encourage you. I thank you for your time to uh, to uh, to give this issue a fair uh, fair hearing and and to go ahead with it. Thank you. Ray. Thank you. No more speakers, Mr. Chair. Introduction bills. Bill number 112, introduced by Councilmember Harder, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to accept two grants from the Missouri Department of Transportation, totaling up to $62,707 from, from, for support of two runway projects at Spirit of St. Louis Airport, authorizing execution of related documents and authorizing acceptance and appropriation of additional funding if granted. Bill number 113, introduced by Councilmember Harder, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute a contract with Missouri Hangar West Incorporated, DBA Crown Aviation Services for lease of approximately 5.6 acres of land at Spirit of St. Louis Airport for aviation-related activities. Bill number 114, introduced by Councilmember Trakis, an ordinance amending ordinance number 18,237 is amended by repealing and reenacting <coughs> section 3 pertaining to PC 66-96 Bayless Baptist Church. Bill number 115, introduced by Councilmember Page, an ordinance amending the St. Louis County Zoning Ordinance and the official zoning district maps by changing the boundaries of the R3 Residence District and the R5 Residence District is provided here in PC 13-17, Youth Bridge Community Foundation, Haven House. Mr. Chair, that is all the bills. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Perfection. Bill number 112, introduced by Councilmember Page. Move to perfect bill number 112. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 112 is perfected. <clears throat> Final passage. Bill number 116 introduced by Council Member Dolan. Please hold bill number 116. Bill number 116 is held. Bill number 94 introduced by Council Member Wassinger. Please drop from the order of business. Bill number Sorry. 94 is dropped. Bill number 107 introduced by Council Member Irby. I move the final passage of bill number 107. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trakis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 107, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 107 is finally passed. Bill number 108, introduced by Councilmember Irby for Councilmember Page. Move for final passage of Bill number 108. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trakis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 108, there are six ayes and one absent. <coughs> bill number 108 is finally passed. Bill number 109, introduced by Councilmember Wassinger. Uh, I move for final passage of bill number 109. Second. I just have a question. Um, Councilman Harder, do you know if this property has been brought up to condition for acceptance <coughs> or if that's waived in this setting? I do not. I wasn't prepared to answer that with the absence of. And I didn't know she was going to be absent until right before the meeting. But I would like to ask her that question because if it has met these the routine maintenance requirements, I would be happy to support it. But I would like. I went back and looked at the letter, and I didn't see that in the letter, which was unusual because it's usually included in the letters. Okay. Would you be comfortable holding that until we can talk to her? Let's next hold week? it. That'd be fine. Thank you. Bill number 109 is held. Bill number 110 introduced by Councilmember Irby for Councilmember Page. Move for final passage, Bill number 110. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. 
Councilmember Wassinger, Councilmember Gray. Aye. Councilmember Dolan. Aye. Councilmember Trachis. Aye. Councilmember Harder. Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 110, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 110 is finally passed. Bill number 111, introduced by Councilmember Wassinger. In the absence of uh, Colleen Wassinger, I move for final passage of Bill number 111. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby. Aye. Councilmember Page. Aye. Councilmember Wassinger. Councilmember Gray. Pass. Is that an extension? No, I'm waiting for it. Well, I had a question actually prior, but I didn't know if it was okay to interrupt. You can ask a question. Um, is this the same green trails on Gravel Way? This is the, uh, the CID, the CID uh, on the road in West County. It's, uh, in the Fenton area that we had the hearing okay. or, or Fenton, I mean. Okay. Yeah. Uh, aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trachis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, Bill number 111, there are six ayes and one absent. Bill number 111 is finally passed. Moving on to resolutions, Mr. Chair, we have two additional this evening. Resolution number one, introduced by Councilmember Page. Move approval of resolution number one. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trachis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, resolution number one, we have, there are six ayes and one absent. Resolution number one is uh, adopted. Resolution number two, introduced by Councilmember Irby? I move for adoption of resolution number two. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Councilmember Gray? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember Trachis? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, on resolution number two, there are six items and one absent. Resolution number two is adopted. Moving on to unfinished business, Mr. Chair, item number one, six district. Proceed file in the deposit agreement and subdivision plat be approved as recommended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number two. Hold on the order of business, and that will be the order. Item number three, six district. Please hold on the order of business. So ordered. Item number four, seventh district. Uh, hold on the order of business. So ordered. Item number five. Hold on the order of business. Same motion on items six and seven, and that will be the order. And moving on to new business, Mr. Chair, we have three prepared orders this evening. I move for adoption of orders number one, two, and three. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Orders one, two, and three are adopted. Um, I do have an announcement to make um, due to the um, important work of our first responders in police and metro and other folks that would be interested in testifying in our metro Safety and Security Committee of the Whole hearing tomorrow. That meeting will be uh, canceled and we will reschedule at a time when everyone um, can participate. Motion to adjourn. Uh, before we adjourn, Mr. Chair, I, I would, uh, if you'll permit, I, I do have some questions regarding the status of the, um, the auditor inquiry. I'd like to get into it with you. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Crane, I want to direct my questions to you. Um, I'm in receipt of an April 18, 2017 letter from you uh, concerning <clears throat> my inquiry to you relating to your office's investigation of the county auditor. I provided the clerk with a copy of your letter and I asked her that she give it to you now. You have uh, it in front of you. Are you familiar with the letter? I am. Okay. Could you elaborate on the nature of the investigation of the inquiry referenced in your letter? In what sense? Elaborate. Well, first, let's start. How did your um, inquiry, how was it initiated? Well, Mr. Trakis, you know how. Two members of the council asked me to look into the qualifications of the nominee. Okay, and so I want to make sure, and that's why I asked, I want to make sure I understand, you were asked to look into the qualifications. Is that correct? That's correct. And were you asked to look into anything else? No. Okay. Um, in, your, in that letter, you indicate, and I quote, 
In assuming initial responsibility of the inquiry, I implicitly acknowledge the fiduciary responsibility I and my office owe each member of the council, the council as a whole, and of course, St. Louis County in general. Did I read that correctly? You did. Okay. Can you tell us, please, what you mean by fiduciary responsibility? Well, as a member of the uh, legal staff, chief legal officer of the county, I have to carry out all my responsibilities with honor, dignity, and in full respect. And that's what I mean. Okay. Um, so in discharging this fiduciary responsibility, do you believe that you owe the council an explanation as to what you are doing with respect to your inquiry regarding the uh, auditor? At, you know, on occasion. Um, is it not true, and can we agree, that pursuant to the charter, the county auditor position is one of only two positions the county council has exclusive responsibility for hiring and firing? I believe that's true, yes. Um, and can we also agree that the county auditor position is a non-merit position? Yes. It has certain protections. Similar yes, to a merit position, a merit position, yes. But it is a non-merit position, correct? Right, with certain protections provided by the charter. Okay, thank you. Uh, and is it also true that your position as county counselor is the same? That is a non-merit position with protections. Uh, no. What's the difference then? I have no protections. You have no protections. Okay, and so that's where I was going. In connection with that, if I understand correctly, you're appointed by and serve at the pleasure of the county executive. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, as such, is it accurate to say that once hired, the county executive has exclusive authority over you and ultimate responsibility for directing your functions, conduct, and performance? No. You would not say that's an accurate statement? No, I would not. Who else has authority over you besides the county executive? I do. You have authority over yourself? Right. Yeah, that's the whole idea. Is it of honor, integrity? Mr. Trakis, you know that. And you've already asked me all these questions. Well, I, actually, I haven't, but that's fine. Uh, um, you have. In the case of the county auditor, a non merit position, is it true that it's the county council that has always had exclusive responsibility for investigating any aspects of the county auditor's performance and conduct? I'm not sure that that's true. I can't speak to all time. In the time that you've been county counselor, have you ever had an occasion, other than the current one, to investigate any aspects of the county auditor's performance or conduct? No. Would you agree or disagree that the county council has, in fact, exclusive responsibility in this area? No. Who else besides the county council has authority and responsibility over the county auditor? Well, there can be any number of persons. I mean, he's not, the auditor appointed by the council is not free to perform or, or commit any act that he so chooses. He's subject to the same responsibilities as any other appointed person, regardless of the body by whom the person was appointed. I understand that. My question, though, goes to who supervises and is ultimately responsible for the supervision of the county auditor. Well, I'm not sure that anybody has immediate supervision authority over the auditor. He's supposed to be independent, so the council does not control him, and the council can't commit any act that would immediately indicate that they are in control. Do you agree the council has exclusive authority to hire an auditor? I think the council has exclusive authority to appoint the auditor. And would you agree or disagree that the council has exclusive authority to dismiss or terminate an auditor? Well, I'm not sure that they have exclusive authority. Again, yes. if, he, if, he, if the auditor performs an illegal function or commits a crime or is not qualified, then he can be removed from office by other authority than the council. And what authority are you referencing? I'm re referencing the uh, Coloranto authority that's vested in the prosecuting attorney's office and in my office by statute. Your office? By rule. That was just added recently. So help me understand by what authority you believe you have to conduct this inquiry that you've been requested to, to uh, perform. Well, I'm the, I'm the uh, legal officer of the county. And the, the uh, two members of the council came to me and suggested that we look into the qualifications 
of the appointed auditor to see if he meets the qualifications required of him by the charter. And, and I appreciate that. You've already told us that. And I guess my question now is, um, so any member of the council then can request and initiate um, an inquiry or an investigation without any um, input from the rest of the council? Is that how you see it? Well, I would suggest that that be true under certain circumstances, yes. Now, we've already established that you're appointed and serve at the pleasure of the county executive. So in that sense, do you have any concern that the executive branch, that is the office of the county ex executive, is encroaching upon the responsibility that's been trusted to the council um, for the auditor? No. You have no concerns in that regard? No. My involvement was, was uh, invited by the count members of the council. I understand that. Okay. But you, you are appointed by and serve at the pleasure of the county executive. So this goes to whether or not that reality presents a conflict for you. It does not. You do not believe it's no. a conflict of interest? No. The executive had nothing to do with the inquiry that was initiated by members of the council. I'm not suggesting he had anything to do with the well, initiation of it. What I'm suggesting is that your fidelity is owed to him because he appoints you and you serve at his pleasure. Therefore, it, it presents a conflict for you with respect to investigating an auditor that's appointed by, your word, the county council. And you don't see it that way? No, I don't. Okay. Do you believe that your inquiry, as it's currently proceeding, encroaches upon and presents a separation of powers issue or question? No. Do not. You all, in your letter, you also state, and I quote, I have anticipated and considered all substantive and procedural developments. As a result, I asked the Office of the Prosecuting Attorney to be involved. Did I read that correctly? Yes. Okay. You go on to state, Mr. Bart Calhoun, a senior assistant prosecuting attorney who heads the Public Corruption Unit, is, headed, is heading the inquiry for Mr. McCullough's office. Did I read that correctly? Yes. Okay. So I, I want to make sure I understand would it be fair to say that your anticipation and consideration of all substantive and procedural developments led you to, to, to decide to involve and seek the participation of the Public Corruption Unit for the Prosecuting Attorney's Office? Yes. Okay. Now, at the time you made that decision, did you or anyone on your staff have any reason to suspect any public corruption on the part of the County Auditor or any member of the County Council? No. So, would it be fair to say that your decision to involve the prosecuting attorney's office was based purely on your desire and intent to cover all potential bases? Well, we involve, it involves a lot of strategic analysis, one of which was, in the event that the qualifications of this particular appointee did not meet the charter requirements, what would be done in response to that? And one of the considerations, again, Normally, I don't discuss this matter in public. I understand. But you're insisting upon it being this way. One of the things that we considered is what would we do upon the determination that the qualifications were not met by this appointee? And one of the options available, again, is Co Oronto. And the prosecuting attorney's office has a greater degree of experience in that type of particular uh, pleading than my office does, and they also have additional investigatory arms that my office does not possess. And those are the considerations that I made, and that's why we invited Mr. McCullough into the uh, investigation. Okay. Well, what I, I understand and appreciate that, but what I'm having a hard time with is um, how, if you were to determine or somehow have a reasonable basis to believe that the auditor's qualifications were not appropriate, how does that in any way, shape, or form translate into public corruption? Well, I didn't assign the person in Mr. McCullough's office to the task. He did. So well, I guess we should follow up with him then on that. Well, if you'd like to. But uh, again, Mr. Trakis, when you, when you go down an investigation, 
you don't presuppose anything. And that's also in my letter to you. Correct. I read that. Okay? We did not put up any artificial boundaries regarding the breadth or depth or length of the investigation. But you do go down with consideration as to what would your next step be. And you consider that before you take the next step, not after. So, so that's why when I say that we've made those considerations, that is what I did. Okay. But I didn't go into Mr. McCullough's office and demand any particular attorney be assigned to this case. That was his decision. And it's likely, it's likely, although I can't say exactly, it's likely because Mr. Calhoun has been involved in Colorado matters in the past. Okay, and we'll follow up with Mr. McCullough on that, and I, I appreciate um, your response. I guess um, what I, I'm a little concerned about is you said that, in essence, you've placed no boundaries on the nature or extent of your inquiry, if I'm understanding your last no, response. No, that's not true. Okay. As I mentioned to you before, we're only making inquiry as to the qualifications of the appointment. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure I was clear on that. Um, Just so I'm clear, at the time that you decided to reach out to the prosecuting attorney's office um, and, and <clears throat> get them involved, did you have any evidence of public corruption on the part of the county auditor or any member of the county council? No. <clears throat> and since you decided to involve the prosecutor's office, have you personally or any employee of the county counselor's office found any reason to suspect or uncovered, uncovered any evidence of public corruption on the part of the county auditor or any person employed by the county, county auditor's office, any member of the county council, or anyone employed by the county council? No. So again, your decision to expand your inquiry to include the prosecuting attorney's office was based on, if I understand correctly, your desire and intent to cover um, any anticipated development that might arise. Right. But at, at that time, at least in, the, in your April letter, that decision was made without any reason to suspect or any evidence of public corruption, correct? Yes. I think that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Yes, Chairman. Please. Motion Thank you. No, um, I just have a couple of questions. Um, we won't recognize that motion just yet. This um, quo or rento rule that you added to your office, did you add that rule after you started this investigation? No, that's a rule that was added to the Missouri Supreme Court rules by the Missouri Supreme Court. For It's not a rule that was created so by... So Quo rento has been around for a while, but it was re recently given to county... Counselors. Offices, county counselors. county counselors, yes. And then, do you think that this, or would you maybe recognize our concern that the executive branch decision to block the hiring of the independent auditor merit based position in the auditor office, along with this separation of powers question, represents a pattern? of obstruction of the independent auditor function of the county council? No, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what the pattern. question is. If, if the executive branch refuses to allow a budgeted position in the auditor's office, an internal auditor position to be filled in the county council office, in county council jurisdiction, on the independent auditor function, don't you recognize that as a second piece of a pattern? No. Okay. Do you have a motion? Please? Motion to adjourn. Yes. You, um, you said that any member of the council can ask for someone to be I'm investigated. Sorry, you turned your microphone. Oh, sorry. Correct. I didn't hear the question. You did say that any member of the council can ask you, your office, to investigate someone or their or department or any other entity. Well, if somebody can come to me and ask me to, to make an inquiry, yes. And if the county executive does not agree with their request, what do you do? Well, I, I follow through with the inquiry made by the council member. Regardless of what his position is. Sure. Also, you mentioned, uh, there are some things mentioned earlier about um, the county executive having um, 
authority over certain things that you do. So if there's a conflict between the county council and the county executive's office, and you are the person we have to go to for information, there's no, what do you do then? How do you, how do you rectify that? How do you represent both parties? Well, if, I don't know that the, a disagreement rises to the level of a conflict, because as I mentioned to you before, disagreements of ideas is not a conflict of interest. That's why I use and the word conflict. I beg your pardon? That's why I'm using, I use the word conflict. Right. So I'm not if there's a, if, just, just like the, uh, the, the uh, charter and ordinances provide, if the council needs independent counsel, we hire independent counsel if there is a disagreement between it and any other department of the, uh, of the county. It doesn't have to just be with the executive. If you, have a, if you have a disagreement that we can't represent both parties on and it just has to do with another department, again, the charter and the ordinances provide for the opportunity of hiring another council to represent you. Has that request been made this year? No. This, okay. So who decides if an independent council is awarded? Well, generally it would be my office. So you would but decide it, whether or not we had a disagreement that rose, we had a conflict and a policy question that rose to the level of a conflict of interest. That decision rests solely with you? No, I wouldn't say it rests solely. I think it would be in consultation with the council and the other department and make a, a learned decision if a true conflict exists. Well, if you have two different opinions, then you just recognize that there's a difference of opinion and make your decision? Well, if, if, it's just if, if you as my client, which is what you are, we're in a position where you say, I cannot represent you as a client because of the conflict I have with another client, perhaps the Department of Transportation, for example. If, it, if, the, if the reasonable persons that we are agree, then you get another counsel. If, you're, if it's not being reasonable, then that will be the determination too. Well, I, I would argue that the county executive decision to not allow us to fill an independent auditor's office staff position right. is unreasonable. Well, I think that that's something you can deal with the with the, the executive on. But I think we have I to caution you were my attorney. I think we have to caution the audience, though, is that the council doesn't have authority to fill the auditor's staffing positions. That's the auditor's job. And it says in the in the in the, uh, in the charter. He shall manage his office and appoint the employees therein under the merit system. So if the council wants to appoint somebody and the executive doesn't want them, the council doesn't have the authority to appoint him. So there isn't a conflict there. Whose budget is the auditor in? Does the auditor have their own line item in the budget? I'd have to check. I believe they have their own budget. So, Mr. Crane, I want to make sure I understand what you just said. If the auditor wants to hire um, assistant auditors and the county executive refuses to fill those positions for whatever reason, you don't believe that's a conflict between the council and the county executive? No. Okay. Any so, more than any other department head who wants to fill okay. a position and that the executive in exercising his authority rejects that request. Okay. So when St. Louis County exist with essentially two auditors, the auditor himself and one assistant auditor, and other counties of similar size and smaller have several auditors. And we've asked for, and the auditor has asked for additional auditors, and the county executive won't fill those positions. It's your contention that that is not a conflict between the council, the legislative body, who appoints the auditor and who is supposed to be independent and the county executive? Well, I'm not sure that when you say a conflict, you mean a disagreement about. I'm talking about a conflict of interest. No. Okay. So, and and, and then the council is left with no recourse. Is is your position correct? Well, the recourse, the council has has no authority to appoint the man. The the auditor does. Right. So the, the recourse, individual that the, the council re appointed has right, authority. Right. But he is independent of the council. Right. Right. So he then goes, just like any other department head, goes to the executive through Mr. Powers, who you interrogated on Friday, 
and, and goes through the, the process just like everybody else. That is to determine whether or not there is justification to spend the money on, on a person that the department had has requested be filled. And if Mr. Powers or the county executive refuse to do that, the only recourse for the auditor is what, to sue? I guess he could sue. He could sue, but he couldn't certainly rep use you to represent him, could he? Well, I wouldn't, I would, if he wants to sue the county, Mr. Trakis. That would be a problem wants, for you, right? If he wants to sue the county, because uh, he goes to the council, excuse me, to the executive, and he's not allowed to hire that person, I'll get him independent counsel. Okay, so it would present and a he conflict. Will pay, he'll pay for it. But it would present a conflict for you, correct? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's obvious. Thank so, you. So if someone on the county council is unhappy with something and, and we want to um, look for a judicial remedy, do we are we obligated to pay for that out of pocket as yes. well? Well, it's not it's not individually paid for by the members. It's out of your budget. And that's pursuant to the ordinance and the charter. So if we went to look for a judicial remedy for our conflict of interest and found legal counsel, it would be assigned to us and taken out of our budget? The, the cost associated with that use, yes. That's again according to charter and an ordinance. Even though we don't have a line item for legal counsel? You'd have to, you'd have to un unencumber funds for that purpose. With the county executive's permission? Well, it, it's either you have it or you don't. He's not going to deny permission to hire won't those. deny us permission to have legal counsel. Have you discussed this with him? No, but that's my recommendation. <coughs> Your recommendation would be to allow us to use our own funds for legal counsel to seek a judicial remedy to our conflict of in, in opinion that you perhaps believe it isn't a conflict of interest, but we might we might believe that. Right. No. If you have a conflict, and I agree that you have a conflict, you will get independent counsel. And if you can, you should be able to convince me. If we get a is. court action, if we file something in court, would that convince you? <laughs> <laughs> because you you decide if we have a conflict of interest that rises to the level of us if, getting. If you it's want, like if you turn the electricity off to our building, right. If and you, you say it's not dark enough, right? If you want to to bring to or attempt to bring a lawsuit, uh, I don't know why you would do it since you don't have any hiring authority for the auditor's office. But if the auditor wanted to sue <coughs> the county because he felt his position should be filled, I'll get him counsel. You would pick his counsel. Well, I will make sure he has counsel, adequate counsel. Yeah, and you're uh, and you'll pick that anybody's person. opinion. It'll be adequate counsel. That's not going to be the issue. But he wouldn't be allowed to choose his. The auditor's office would not be able to choose their. If counsel. he doesn't like the lawyer that I would select, then he would select the lawyer with me. <laughs> what does that mean? That well, means you still have to agree to it, right? Well, technically, yeah, but I'm not going to get in the way of the guy. Well, I don't. We're seeing a lot of getting in the way of our decisions. Well, we just don't know how Mr. far it's going to be carried Mr. out. Mr. Chair, I can't get into those kinds of things. I don't make policy. Okay, I'm, the, I'm the legal officer. Well, I don't know how much of this is policy and how much of it well, is interpretation of the law. That's that's where we can get hung up, I think. Can I, can I make a statement to say? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, just a comment on what you said. You, you said we have to convince you. That's the second time in the last three days I've heard that the council people have to uh, convince the employees, our employees. We're the council. We've been elected by the people to look out for the people to make sure that there's transparency and we haven't been allowed to do that. Now you just said, which proves, and I hope people are listening, you said you don't know why we would question, you don't know why we would, because we're the council and we are held responsible for anything that goes wrong. We, we feel we need additional auditors why do we have to convince you and to convince Mr. Powers we were elected by the people? You don't have to convince me of anything. I'm you not said part a minute ago we had to convince you about Well, that. I'm not sure about what you're speaking. The, the ordinance provides for how it is that a, a conflict council is selected and the okay. charter does. And I'll just follow the charter and the ordinance. Do you admit, it. though, that we have a conflict? We no, I don't. A conflict. You no. don't. You don't think we so, have a conflict? No. Yes, I just want to go on record. Um, this is not the only time we've had a conflict since I've been here. 
and I just want to go on the record. It's not just the auditor position, that's, that's, right. to my opinion, that we've had a conflict of interest with the county executive's office. And I just want to go on record because that's kind of what you alluded to. It's legislation and everything yes, else. A lot everything of we've tried to do, there's been a conflict. And then one of the council members wanted to know, is this a dictatorship? It's been a dictatorship since 2014. Any other comments? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Vote for adjourn. Council <laughs> 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 <laughs>